I wanted to record this video a couple weeks ago, but my laptop was delayed. I'm going to be testing the thermals on this Lenovo Legion, and I'm going to be testing it with this here. This here is a Gyojo, I guess we'll call it, Gyojo, uh, thermal imaging camera. It's a brand new model from them, GW192A, infrared IR. I assume that stands for IR. Uh, it's for smartphones. So I'm going to test this with my iPhone. I'm going to plug it in and get some stuff installed, some apps installed, and then I'm going to record, I'll record some like non-laptop stuff, because you can use it for other stuff as well. It doesn't have to be for game testing purposes for what I do. So if you have an older iPhone, like say you have an iPhone 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, whatever, uh, you do have the adapter, USB-C to Lightning. Uh, I have an iPhone 16 Pro Max, so I don't need to worry about that. I can just plug this in directly. There's the sensor there. Uh, if you have Google, obviously you can use Google, but I'm going to use the App Store. So I'm coming here. And what was it called? THG T -H -G Start. THG Start. THG Start. Yeah. Open it up. Okay, and basically you just plug it in and launch the app. So you should plug it in first. So that's that there. Okay, so let's plug this in. Okay, so we're going to go like that there. Uh, they have this app will be for other products as well. I'm sure they're going to be coming out with more products in the future Maybe some other options uh, Sure, that's fine. Ooh, okay, that was quick. Well, I guess it knows what it is. Right? It knows what the camera is So that's good auto calibration Ensure the temperature measurement accuracy auto calibration perform every 10 seconds which caused video stuttering. That's fine It has a little stutter. I'm used to that Okay, so let's have a look like that so we can kind of see what we're looking at here. You can see it is fairly zoomed in, but that's okay. We got the corner there. Now, if we look here, we can obviously see there is a screen corner there. It's taking a hot spot there at 40. One thing you can do, you can see it's not really showing anything right now. Just kind of the range max to minimum. So you can come here and you can go center. And that'll give us a center measurement. So the center where that point is, if you can see that, right, 30. Light bulb up there. I'm not sure what the range is, but it's definitely detecting that light bulb. 56 on that trim. LED light should be a little bit warmer. 39. Come down. That's a cable of some kind. Come down here. Laptop. Looks red, but it's not. You can see it's only 31 degrees. Now, of course, we do have the palette here. Uh, it can be a little confusing when you're looking at the scale bar in the palette because you're like, red is always hot. But if you come down here and you look at this cold, cold scene, and we come down here, uh, the laptop is cool, right? So it's right there. It's only 32 degrees. There's actually not much that's hot on this right now. So it's going to look like it's coming out red, but it's still not that hot. Right. There's some hot spots up in the corner over there. So then you can go hot like that, and it will say, what is the peak in this scene here? Which is definitely be parts of the monitor. Cold. What's the coldest part in the scene? Right. Point. I can also hit some points. If I hit the point button, I can say, well, what's that there? What's that there? And what's that there? So the purple is 32, that dark zone there is 30, and the hot spot near my monitor is 39. It's pretty hot in here, it's summer. All right, that's kind of cool. You can turn those off if you want, just so I can touch the screen again. You can get rid of them if you click on them like that. Delete, go delete, delete. You can add them back later if need be, pretty cool. You can also do a line, which is really cool. This is a really cool tool, because you can come in here and you can draw a line across. So if I want to know what's the spread across, for example, this. It's going to pop up there and say line one. Line one, the maximum temperature in that line right now is 38 degrees, probably up in the corner. The minimum is 29, probably somewhere in there. And the average across the line is 32. And delete. Okay, let's make another line. So we'll come up, bring the camera up like that. I'll make one more line. I'm going to draw it this way now. And you can see how consistent it is now because we're going across that cold area. Right, go up here. The average across the bezel, it's obviously hotter. The average across the screen, it's obviously hotter. So it is working, right? Like, I mean, that makes sense. It's colder across there and it's doing that. Now watch what happens if I bring my finger in. 
boom, see the max went up? Because the, it's measuring the pixels, the uh, max in that area. And it should also affect the average overall, right? Half the line is in my hot hand, half of it's not. It's pretty darn cool. Turn that off so I can get rid of the line. Pretty darn cool. So this isn't just honestly, like I mean for a laptop, sure, obviously do like laptop testing, but you can, this is the type of thing you might be using if you're some type of like contractor or something like that or doing home renovations because honestly you're looking for, you know, changes in temperature, looking for hot spots. It's not just going to give you a hot spot. Be like, okay, let's measure the hot spot across this, you know, pipe or something or this wall and identify an area that's pretty cool. Draw a frame on the image to tack the icon again. Okay. So let's come over here so you guys can see something that's a little bit more interesting. So we're going to go like that. We're going to draw a rectangle. I'm assuming. I haven't done this one yet. So now we have a square. The max inside of the rectangle is 47, probably in that hot area right there. The minimum, the average. So I can say what's the you know temperature, in a, like the mean temperature in a certain area. I guess it's average, not mean, but what's the average temperature in a certain area? Very cool. Right? So if you have a larger surface and you'd say, okay, you know, I need a general surface temperature across. Pretty darn cool. What else we got in here? So we got palettes. Now, again, it isn't red. This is the very easy one to understand, kind of red to purple, uh, bl bluish purple being cold, yellowish and getting up to the very light yellow being hot. Pretty easy to understand. But you can get rid of some of that so it's not so like biased. You're not like, okay, well, red has got to be hot, right? It's a little harder to see than something like that, but you can go like that. This one here is more typical what I would use in my actual like academic field. It'd be something closer to this. It also helps separate out stuff a little bit there. You have more color variation where here you have, you know, a few colors going from purple, like this dark blue purple, up into a magenta type color, red up to yellow white. Here we just have more. We have like a full rainbow spectrum here. So there's just more colors to be represented. You just got to kind of think about it a little bit harder and be like, oh, green, green is actually kind of like warmer. Single palette, uh, single, single color with uh, bright and dark is always fairly easy to understand. Green, green always works too. Very easy to understand for a human, just brightness and dark. So here's some emissivity settings. Emissivity would be like reflection, I guess I'd call it in like plain English. Um, albedo, technically, like if you're looking at reflection of like, like snow being a high albedo. Uh, if you're looking at uh, black concrete, would be low albedo. It's kind of like that. Emissivity is a little bit different, but kind of like that. So how much electromagnetic energy is coming off? Electromagnetic energy can be visible light. It can be infrared, ultraviolet, whatever, all the whole spectrum. So it can go all the way down, all the way down to like gamma rays and that kind of stuff. Um, and different emissivities, it's like how much energy, we'll call it energy. How much energy are they going to give off? How much electromagnetic energy, EM waves are coming off white paper? Like different, like I guess water has more reflectivity than white paper, for example, and soil is going to be lower. Uh, wood is apparently, I didn't know that, but apparently wood is the lowest. So if you have a big pile of wood, I guess it's going to keep the heat and it's not going to give it off very much. Keep the elect, uh, infrared. Uh, I'm just calling it heat because this is working in infrared. It's not really exactly heat per se, but it kind of is. Uh, so I guess wood, but anyways, so, you know, ceramics, you can, you can standardize by what you're looking at here. So if we went cardboard, uh, where did that go? I lost it. Uh, printed circuit board would be like in my wall. If you were trying to look at that kind of stuff, cemented concrete, if you're outdoors, paint, let's do paint, right? And that will just help standardize what we're looking at here, right? So if I'm doing measurements on paint, uh, it might have a little, like it's going to have a different behavior than, you know, plastic or metal. They're going to behave differently. So if I'm looking at a certain type of you can just probably leave it generally default for a lot of stuff. Uh, where did that go? But if you're looking at um, specific types of materials, like if you're doing asphalt type measurements, if you're using it for your road engineer, you're looking at asphalt, you probably want to standardize for that. If you're looking at buildings from the outside and you have brick, maybe that. If you're looking at some type of sediment type or sand, combination of both, you probably want to standardize it for that. It's cool that it has that. Uh, distance, configure the distance. So that's how far something is. 0.9 me I'm never going to be doing it that far. So for me, I mean, probably looking at 30 to 40 centimeters is pretty typical for me. Um, so I would typically probably be like that because I'm going to be doing stuff up close, right? I'm going to be working within 100 to 400 degrees Celsius. Like, I don't even know what it's going to do if I do that because there's nothing in this room that's that hot. It might just kind of like freak out. Yeah, it just kind of freaks out, right? Because it's like, what the f is going on? Um, but I, I won't ever be working within those ranges in my professional, like... 
that's hot, 150 degrees. If, any, if I have any electronics that I'm reviewing that are around 150 degrees, it's bad news bears. Uh, temperature unit, Fahrenheit, Kelvin, Celsius. I'm Canadian, so I use Celsius, and I understand it better. Uh, high temperature. Ooh, cool. Okay, so for me, yeah, 80. Low temperature, 20. That's probably actually maybe a little too low. I'd say probably 15, maybe. Uh, that's good for my video purposes, for example. You know, I can just insert a video and be like, this was the hotspot in that edge of the screen there, and it was really important. Or if you're an engineer and you're like, I have a really bad hotspot in, you know, this whatever I'm looking at, if you're electrical maybe, like here's a really bad hotspot in the electrical area, and I'm worried about it causing a fire. So you just take a picture and you send it off to your client or something and be like, yeah, this is hot, and maybe you want to address this. Like I'm going to have to do a little work there. Uh, that's cool. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. You can set up a freaking report. What the hell? Site name? Oh, that's cool. So this is, yeah, this is beyond me. This is like actually for contractors. So you can come in here and you can put in a name and be like, test report. Uh, oh, let's make it more professional. Let's go like that. Let's go, um, we'll do it uh, leak inspection. So I'm gonna look for uh, like some leaks of something. I don't know, water, cold, coldness or something. Site name, my house. Site location, uh, I don't know, uh, storage, storage, okay. Uh, website, don't need that phone number. I can have website or email, Excel. That's so cool. Save changes defaults, not now. That's cool, that's really cool. And you can make notes too. Your house is totally screwed, buds. <laughs> I don't know, what? so sick <laughs> and it actually makes a report yeah that's sick and you can email it to me like, where are you screwed that's that's sick i like that that's really cool that's really cool actually you can generate a freaking pdf report that's cool yeah that's cool i like that so now i have my legion here playing game very cool so you can see that there we'll let it warm up i just turned it off so we're gonna let it warm up for a minute come in like that and what are we comparing to the keyboard deck? Well, the keyboard deck's 24 degrees, and that little hotspot right there is 31. I'm kind of curious what that is. That's 32. It's not that hot, actually. 32. Right, we have a vent over here, so let's click that again. Got 44 over there. Let's actually clear it for a sec. Get the center back. There we go. So the center is 30-ish degrees in that little spot there. Come over here, we'll look at the vent. 44, for example. I'll check the areas over here where it's hot. So I'm gonna take a video now, rather than showing you guys in my hand how I do this, and I'll show you what the eventual results would kind of look like. Okay, so here's a look at the laptop with that kind of red to blue palette. It's very obvious to see where the super hot spots are here with the red. The green can be a little confusing because it's kind of, you'd associate with cool, but uh, red is very obvious. So you can very easily identify like true hot spots here. You can see some of the other temperatures coming out. So then what I did is I flipped it over to just a black and white, just a monochrome scale here. And you can see it's much more easier to see kind of variation. You can see the temperature coming out of the side vent here. Obviously it's warming up the actual desk here. You can see the hot spots on the actual vent itself, of course, as well. And as we move across the keyboard here, of course, you can see the temperatures. It gives me, even tells me where it is, you know, 30 up to 37 at a little hot spot there. Come down to the keyboard deck here and you can see, oh, it's 24 degrees. So if I was doing a video, you know, I'd say, you know, this is 30-ish ground. My hand's not too bad. Screen up here is not getting too much heat. No exhaust into the screen. So that would be a good thing for me. I'd say, you know, you're not getting a lot of... Uh, exhaust onto the screen which is good then I typically would look at the sides make sure that there's air coming out which is what you want you want the hot air to come out of these vents here to show that it's really exhausting out quite a bit that's important so these vents should theoretically be relatively hot often I'll check the power cable as well just make sure that it's not getting too hot that might cause damage any type of defects you could possibly detect here you know if this thing's going up to 80 90 degrees and then the bottom is critical for me you know looking for areas where your lap would sit on your legs for example you can actually see the fans are just look for super hot spots there and then I'm going to just do a little walk around here so I'm walking around having a look into my bathroom here. This is cool. I'm gonna use the grayscale one for this. This is really cool. Turn on the light, 
because I can't freaking see anything. You can't tell the lights on or not. Uh, I'm actually looking up here now at the lights. They take a moment to heat up. So you know, right now that you can't really see them, they're actually kind of cold spots at the top. You're kind of a little bit dark. And if I look under, you can actually see the bulb there. It's getting a little bit warmer, it's starting to heat up. So it's definitely working. It's very obvious. Take a look like that. Look down at the water here. I have something that I'm soaking here. It's cool in my basement right now. So you can actually see the water on my hand, leaving a residual of cold water. So it's picking it up. You can actually see it uh, cooling down my hands, flicking that out and cooling down surfaces. Walk over here, touch this towel here. You can actually see the cold water coming off my hand and cooling the towel. A little bit of residuals. Right, here's me looking at some lights here. I just turned them on. You can't really see them, but as we watch for a minute, uh, you can see them slowly starting to heat up. Uh, this is very bright now, like extremely bright to me because I put light on. I can barely look at it. Uh, but we're looking at temperatures here, right? This is a colder basement, so it takes a moment for the lights to actually heat up. And then, you know, coming over here, the window, you can see where it's much cooler outside right now. Uh, it gets fairly cool here at night still. In this time of year, we're still looking at 16, 17 degrees outside, so much cooler. So very, very cool. And then we'll flip into myself there, zooming in. Look at that. Zooming in on my face here, just having a look. Looks pretty cool. Switch it over to the red. You can see the hot spots. Apparently my teeth are hot. The inside of my cheeks, my gums, I guess that's a lot of blood flow there. Hands looking pretty warm there. Peak hot areas around my eyes. So that's pretty cool there as well. So it's definitely working. Okay, so that's the thermal camera here. Trying to do something cool here for the ending, so I can't show it, but right now that's the uh, Gyojo. Okay, so that's the Gyojo thermal camera, model number GW192A, infrared. Uh, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. It does have a lot of extra really cool features that I think are gonna be cool. I mean, I, don't, I personally don't need all the extra features for what I do, which is, you know, looking at tech type stuff, but some of them are really cool. But I think if you're a contractor, like, holy smokes, being able to, like, generate a PDF from the app is pretty darn sick. So they went beyond just, you know, making a cool little camera here and doing something that does a little bit more than that. So this thing's really cool, the Gyojo thermal imaging camera. I think it's great for people like me. People, definitely gonna be fantastic for, you know, the home warrior who's renovating their house. But I think it's actually gonna be really good for people who are doing some, you know, contracting. Maybe not contracting for like the United Nations or something, but you know, if you're just running a business, doing some home contract work type stuff, uh, it's gonna be a very good product, honestly.